Don't be sorry because it's over. Cringe because it happened. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the miscellaneous channel where we do miscellaneous things. I'm Zeleni. So yes, I'm back. Yay, back reviewing a shitty teen movie and what a great movie to come back to. It is The Kissing Booth 3. I'm sorry I didn't make this video before I went on vacation, but I'm back and I still have thoughts about it. I might even bring in special guests at the end of this video, so... We'll see. <laughs> so The Kissing Booth as a series started out very poorly received. It's definitely one of the, the worst reviewed teen movie franchises of Netflix. It's interesting how I feel like The Kissing Booth is like the villain to, to all the boys I've loved before. It's very similar. It's based on a book. It is um, three parts. It has like hot Netflix stars in it. So like it's interesting how... It feels like the kissing booth is like the yin to the yang. It's like the dark to the light of to all the boys. I don't know. Because to all the boys I've loved before, it's very wholesome and romantic. The kissing booth is a lot more raunchy and problematic and toxic, uh, but still trying to pass off as romantic. It's like the trashy version. They feel like counterparts. They happen along sort of the similar timeline. But anyway, so The Kissing Booth 3 is the final installment of The Kissing Booth series. If you are not aware of the backstory of these characters, The Kissing Booth is about a girl named Elle who has a best friend named Lee that she's grown up with. They play a lot of dance, dance revolution that's key to the plot like in all the movies for some reason. And they have this long set of rules they developed when they were children. Uh, that they still adhere to. One of the rules that Lee made was that they're not allowed to hook up with each other's relatives, mostly because Lee has a hot older brother named Noah. And the whole conflict of the first movie is that Noah is into Elle and Elle is into Noah and they do this kissing booth fundraiser where they end up making out and then they end up kind of dating and she keeps it a secret from Lee. And uh, Lee finds out and Noah like aggressively beats him up for some reason. <laughs> I don't remember why. And it's very, very toxic. She's like very sexualized, like in Into All the Boys, like sex, it's portrayed a lot more traditionally in the way like uh, Laura Jean, Laura, Laura Jean is more reserved and more like the typical teen depiction of like losing virginity and all that. But in The Kissing Booth, the way Elle is sexualized makes me very uncomfortable from for this whole series. They make like a sex tape in the chemistry lab. Eventually at the end of the first movie, they live happily ever after. Noah gets into Harvard somehow and goes off to college for the second movie. And in the second movie, they're struggling with the typical like, how do we stay together when we're long distance? And they both are sort of cheating on each other emotionally. And then at the end, they're like, JK, we love each other. The second movie for both To All The Boys and The Kissing Booth are so pointless. Um, it's just like, teasing a new romantic interest when you know they're gonna end up with the one from the first movie. Now in the third movie, at the end of the second one, Elle found out she got into both Berkeley and Harvard, and Noah is at Harvard, her boyfriend, and her best friend Lee is going to Berkeley. What a relatable problem, I got into Harvard and Berkeley. <laughs> She's trying to decide which college she's gonna go to. We know she's gonna pick Harvard because she's obsessed with a boyfriend, but whatever. And that's her dilemma at the beginning of the third movie. So let me start getting into the plot of the third movie. Uh, Kissing Booth 3 is about Elle grappling with this conflict, um, but also she's trying to, she's kind of spreading herself too thin over the summer before college. The main overarching plot line is that the parents of the rich boys, like Lee and Noah's parents that are super rich somehow, they have this beach house mansion that um, they're trying to sell. All the kids are all upset because that's where they grew up and made all the memories every summer. So they work at a deal that they're gonna live at that beach house all summer and have fun uh, before they sell it and fix it up to sell. We follow mostly Elle and her problems, but also all these side characters. Elle's problem is that she's sort of spreading herself too thin. Earlier on in the movie, she decides to go to Harvard and choose Noah because Noah said, oh, we'll get an apartment together if we go to Harvard together. And she's like, ooh, of course, then I'm going to Harvard. Lee gets really upset because she's not going to Berkeley. She's like, well, we have this beach bucket list which they magically coincidentally find at the beach house 
uh, that they made also when they were children. These children were making a lot of lists <laughs> um, that were very coherent and elaborate, but you know, whatever. So they find this beach bucket list and, they're, and Elle says to Lee, let's do everything on the bucket list before we go off to college and that'll make it up to you for me not going to Berkeley. And he's like, okay, cool. Uh, we promise, yay, um, let's do it. We get a montage of them doing a bunch of things. Um, so this movie, The Kissing Booth 3, I don't remember if the other movies are as bad as this, but it is made up of mostly montages. It's like, 70% of the movie is montages, which is like flashing scenes with music on top of them doing stuff. <laughs> they always start with a montage for sure. And I gotta give it to the kissing booth. That's one thing they do well is the intro narrated montage. It's very like cliche and stereotypical for teen movies, but they do it in a really fun way. So I'll give it to the kissing booth. The beginning narrations, I like them. I, I have fun with them. It's usually Elle narrating um, a bunch of things they did and it has like fast parts and slow parts and it's like a good way to convey a lot of stuff. But in the third movie, every other five minutes is a montage <laughs> um, and it's just so weird. It's like, are they trying to market their soundtrack? Are they trying to give you flashy visuals while you stare at your phone like I just don't know why they have so many montages but they have a montage completing the bucket list and throughout the movie the main conflict is that Elle is spreading herself too thin between all these people Noah she has like a little job by the beach her dad is starting to date because her mom died in the first movie or before the first movie so her dad is trying to date again so she's balancing family even though she's never with her family she's literally pretty much an adopted daughter of the rich people. She's spreading herself too thin with the boyfriend not spending much time with him. It's weird how ever since the second movie, Elle always goes to Marco. Marco's like the new love interest they introduced in the second movie and they did like a big dance contest together. Every time Elle had a problem in this movie, she would go to Marco and talk out her feelings and Noah would always go to this Chloe girl who's like a, this British beautiful girl that he should he looks a lot more like he should be with like the casting ugh, okay I'll get to the cast but he always goes and tells Chloe his problems with Elle instead of just like talking to each other we never see Elle and Noah really talking that much and that's kind of a pet peeve of mine with the kissing booth movies in general like the kissing booth to me reads a lot like a fanfic uh dynamic with everybody or the main romance the main romance is very very intense he's hunky and dangerous and like a jock and too cool and she's like a loser and youthful um and in the first movie especially they lean into like the school uniform aesthetic a lot so to me it reads kind of like fanfic or maybe like k-drama like how intense the romance is it's like it's like a lot so it gets very toxic and in the third movie they try to redeem noah because he tries to beat up marco almost and marco punches him and noah's like no i don't do that anymore so that we would stop calling him toxic <laughs> the casting for the kissing booth and the main couple really really annoys me because the height difference between noah and l is just too large it's makes the framing of shots look ridiculous. It's literally like, he's here and she's here. Like, this is her face, this is his face. And then when they kiss, it's like, <laughs> very that, and I hate it. So I don't like the casting uh, in that way. Like, I, I just think the high difference is very distracting and it has distracted me from the first movie. The, the main thing I could not understand from this movie, aside from the amount of montages, maybe I'll count the amount of montages and put it here. Um, let's see if I have the discipline to go and count them, but there were a lot of montages. Anyway, the other thing I couldn't understand was how did they get Nintendo to license out their copyright for this movie? I assume they got Nintendo's permission to show a ton of Mario Kart. It definitely felt like an ad for Mario Kart. And it shows like the little brothers playing it, like the actual game. We see gameplay of it, like actual gameplay. And I was like, okay, wow, they got sponsored to promote the new Mario Kart, right? And then later on in the movie, they have a whole scene where they're dressed as the Mario Kart characters and they play Mario Kart in real life. They were throwing bananas. It's a real life Mario Kart. And I'm just like, 
if you're not familiar with the game world, I don't know how much overlap the kissing booth and gaming world has, but Nintendo is notoriously like really, really bad and protective about their copyright. Like they don't let anybody have <laughs> rights to Pokemon, Mario, anything that they make. The way they gave the kissing booth three free reign of their Mario characters, I am like, they actually filmed this movie back to back from the second one, like secretly. And it's actually filmed in South Africa, which I didn't know before researching for this video. It's clear there's no mention of COVID or anything. We can assume um, COVID doesn't exist in this universe, which I'm fine with. I do wonder, this was filmed before COVID, so I'm not talking about this movie specifically, but I do wonder when showing people going off to college and having teen fun in the summer and things like that is gonna stop being relatable because of covid like is there gonna be a time when teens are watching something like this that doesn't acknowledge covid and be like like i don't relate to this i'm not sure if it's happening now or it will ever happen but it, i i do wonder i don't blame this movie for not acknowledging covid i think most people don't like that um i don't love seeing covid on fictional <laughs> uh, media at all so I, I just do wonder i'm like they because at the very end of the kissing booth three we see them all go off and go into college Elle's ultimate decision spoiler alert for the final decision um she does not go to harvard actually she decided that earlier on but changed her mind because she was like i'm just picking colleges based on my boyfriend and my best friend which through this whole movie and seeing lee get jealous and lee ignore his girlfriend rachel all the time and always caring more about Elle, it kind of feels like a polyamorous thing like with this <laughs> the two brothers it feels like the both the brothers are dating Elle sometimes in these movies. And again, that's very uncomfortable for me. But anyway, so at the end she realizes, oh, I'm just picking colleges because of, you know, whoever I'm with and I should pick for myself. Um, she talks to Molly Ringwald and all that. So she decides to go to USC and because she loves Mario Kart throughout the whole, <laughs> throughout the whole movie, she's like, I'm gonna go design games. <laughs> It's so funny because she likes like Dance Dance Revolution, this Mortal Kombat looking type game, and Mario Kart. Um, and she's like very good, right? She's shown as to be very good at these games. And because of that, become a game developer. Which, okay, sure, go off. There's not enough women in the industry. It just, to me, it still felt very random. Like, I didn't know Gamer was like that big a part of her personality because most of the time she's just making lists and hanging out with her two boys but yeah so that's the conclusion she goes to usc to study games i assume usc has a good game program i'm not sure how accurate that is and she also like doesn't end up with the guy which was kind of cool um they were like oh maybe we'll come back to each other someday the, the part that really got me about the gaming thing and that she's gonna be in the gaming industry is at the very end she has this interview to get into usc's gaming program and they ask her like what are your ideas for a game and she's just like uh i don't know <laughs> she's very like no ideas for a game which makes that's what made me be like do you even like games and then eventually she's like okay fine i'll make something up and she gives this very confusing game concept something about fantasy football please if you watched it and it made sense to you please explain it in the comments because i did not understand it and i'm not sure it's because i don't like sports or because i it made no sense <laughs> uh, but she was like and we'll call it fantasy I don't know if C or C the ocean or C with your eyes. Like, maybe I should watch the subtitles. The gag is the admissions committee is like, oh, so true. <laughs> Obviously, she gets in. And then we see a time jump at the very end. The time jump was, I think, the funniest part and worth watching if you go just fast forward to the end. We see where they ended up and how they're reuniting after college. Elle has like a short business lady haircut. It was funny how they made them all try to look like adults by putting them in suits when like adults 
don't dress like that <laughs> nowadays, but okay. So they were all like in suits five years later, post-college, and they were like, oh, what have you been up to? Oh, I designed this game. And the guy's like, I'm a lawyer, and I'm a, you know, whatever. And they all end up back together with the couples they started out with at the beginning. <laughs> Pretty much. It's, it's implied. It's kind of like, we're not sure. And, and they ride motorcycles and stuff, so we're, it's pretty fair to assume that Elle and Noah ended up together, and we see that Rachel and Lee ended up together. Which, Rachel was Lee's girlfriend, who's very, like, always discarded, it feels like, because Lee is obsessed with Elle as well. Rachel was the only one that was, like, thinking clearly the whole movie and was like, uh, I don't know about all this long distance talk. Let's not. Also, like, at the very end, the place they all come together is the kissing booth. Um, they're seeing their high school put on the kissing booth, which I would think in a post-COVID world, yet again, the kissing booth is just quite a disgusting idea. Never in a million years. Even before COVID, there's a disgusting and a huge liability for, like, sexual harassment type violations like it's just not a good idea and i don't think kissing booths exist in real life like i think they would be shut down <laughs> by lots of people so they see the kissing booth again even though it's five years later no covid and they're like ah oh, i can't believe they're still doing it i'm just like me neither girl i can't believe they did it in the first place that's when the only time we see a kissing booth in this movie uh, we see kissing booths happen in the other ones oh my god you know the one of the cringiest parts of the kissing booth three and i'll leave it at this is they had a flash mob scene straight out of 2012 <laughs> with shut up and dance as the song and it was just like this was filmed in 2019 not 2013 like come on this <laughs> there's no need for a flash mob in 2021 we've moved past them as a society i feel like at this point the kissing booth just tries to be bad like they know their place they know what they're doing they're there to be criticized there's like there is an element of camp to the kissing booth i don't think it's gonna be a thing where in 10 years it's gonna be like the new twilight that everyone was like oh yeah i was actually obsessed with that um and it was bad it was so bad it's good kind of thing because it's not as big as a phenomenon as twilight but i wonder if in the future it'll be seen as like more camp rather than like just bad um, maybe not. Feel free to let me know what you think in the comments below. I think that's all I have for my thoughts on that. I wanted to bring in some guests that also have thoughts on the kissing booth and just hear their thoughts. Let me go get them and I'll be right back. What did you think of the kissing booth? Three. This opinion doesn't matter because I never saw the kissing booth or the kissing booth two. I saw The Kissing Booth 3. Immediately, I knew this was not the film for me. Bunch of teenagers that kind of live in a reality I've never experienced before. My friend never had a beach house to be able to just rent for an entire summer, apparently. I just can't relate to that lifestyle. It's just full of montages. The script was just very simple and every line almost didn't, build character enough for me and it was more they put all of the action into the montages for whatever reason and then all the other scenes were so just like dialogue driven to get everything going. What did you think of The Kissing Booth 3? The Kissing Booth 3, okay look here right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I do have to admit I'm ashamed that I watched <laughs> all three movies. I think everybody's talked about the montages that started with one. It, the whole movie was just one big one. They got to do a whole bucket list worth of stuff. I wish I had had that kind of creativity as a child. I think it stressed me out a lot. The main character had so many time management and emotional commitments. That's what life is outside of the movies and I don't want to see that kind of pressure inside of the movie. It helped me learn that saying yes to everything is not good. I don't know if that was the lesson of the movie. I don't know if there was a lesson in the movie. I think it's misleading. I'm a grown adult, supposedly, and for a younger teen or even a child, honestly, it kind of seemed like the movie was made for children. <laughs> I feel like it's kind of irresponsible for children to see this version of reality that, oh, you can casually get into these 
Ivy League universities and decide to turn them down and that they call you and pester you to go to them. I don't think they call you. <laughs> I know. You've been there. I wouldn't, well, not those kinds of schools, but I don't think they would call you. It's misleading for what a friendship should be like. And in the end, I guess the, the hunk of the movie broke up with her for her own good. I thought that was good and more realistic. I wish we could have known more about Chloe and her life situation. It seemed like the most honest part of the movie when she said, I'm a 23 year old grown woman and I'm crying because mommy and daddy are breaking up. Like that honestly seemed like the most genuine and vulnerable part of the movie and I wish I could have seen that story. If there are any movies that are like this again, I will probably watch them. The Addison and Ray movie. Oh god! Yeah. <laughs> I hate it. That's all I have for the kissing booth three. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed. I put out new videos twice a week about pop culture, internet trends, and other miscellaneous things. And you can follow me at miscellaneous on Instagram or Twitter to find out about new videos, or just turn on the bell notification here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.